is there something you wish you could tell him now that you weren't didn't you didn't have a chance to tell him? Uh, fuck, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I drove yeah. Him I was I was aggressive too. I, I didn't I, I was I was just as proud or hard headed as him, so I didn't always take it well, you know. I, I rebelled a lot. It was the it's my personality too. So mm. I mean we tended to clash a lot, but as as time went on, I, I saw that they came from a good place. You know, you didn't you don't it doesn't always strike you that way. When you're a kid, you think you know it all, everything that's a, a bit mm. of a hurdle, you're you're blaming your parents for everything. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Just Us Dad. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for tuning in to another dad conversation. This is Father's Day weekend. We are super excited. If this is the first time you're tuning in, please subscribe, follow us on all uh, on all the platforms, turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything. Uh, we're going to have a great episode today. It's going to be a nice little tribute to our dads. Uh, before we get on to that, though, congratulations to the winner of our giveaway, uh, who will be receiving a Glenfiddich 12 whiskey bottle um from us uh just a sign of our thanks and gratitude for uh liking subscribing commenting and just supporting the podcast so we do appreciate that and that's a little gift that you'll be able to enjoy this weekend cheers on us as usual i have chris that's here and george that's here how are you boys good awesome yeah Father's Day weekend. Can you, can, can you guys see husband on my uh, on my video now? Now we could, but when it's gonna go live, it won't show. No. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, have to ch- I don't have to change it. No, no. For any for anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. The names on on the bottom. Yeah, we've, all, we've we've only done ten episodes, bro. <laughs> you should know by now. No, because it, it sometimes it. I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't know how that goes there. Yeah, you've identified, I think, because you're on. And your I've changed it. Now. I put Chris. I remember when we did when we did the the podcast with Chris uh, Chu. Yeah, I changed it. And it's still husband. Did it work? Oh, well, he worked for that episode. Now I, I see husband. So whatever, yeah. I'm husband for today. It's okay. It won't show. I don't. Think, right. I don't think people know what you're talking about. Basically, it's okay. It's fine. Zoom on the bottom left corner. There's a the names that I that identify with our profile, and Chris has husband. It's <laughs> <problem>. <laughs> So are, are you guys excited? This is Father's Day weekend. Like I'm sure your wives have been preparing uh, for at least a year. Sure. <laughs> really nothing. Oh man. What do you look? I, I know I know that they're gonna prepare some cards. Yeah, yeah. I know that there's like little whispers. Mm, I think it's mo- mostly it's my wife reminding them that they have to do this. That's early on, man. That's good for her because I'm telling you that here things are gonna go down on Saturday, 9 p.m. That's pretty much when things are gonna go down. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. Sunday, Sunday before Sunday. Death. I'm still <laughs> exactly. I might, I might be in the toilet while they're doing it. <laughs> and then, then you're gonna barbecue. Then you're gonna barbecue. Yeah, I might have to cook myself. That's right. And then you're gonna have to barbecue for everyone. That's no, fine. That's fine. We, we, we might add uh, we might add some lobster this year. Ooh, uh, six ninety nine at uh, exactly. Probably. Exactly. Oh, you, follow, you follow the specials, eh? And, and if you have a member's card, well, it's perfect timing. Five ninety nine. Nice steak and a nice lobster. Do you, do you remember making fun of your dad that knew all the specials in every single grocery? Yeah. You know what? And I always remember dad. making fun of him. But deep inside, I knew I was going to end up like that. Oh, really? No. I and, it, 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 and it's like, no matter how much money you make, it's not even a money thing. <laughs> it's not about that. It's, it's, it's just, that's what, that's what you do. But now it's next level, right? With all the apps and everything, you can download the, I can't remember what it's called, the app, but it has all the flyers of every single uh, grocery. It's, it's, it's genius. You have it? Yeah. Yeah, have it. yeah of course. I think I downloaded it and there were too many notifications, so I deleted it because I don't really care. A dollar saved is more than a dollar earned, man. Yeah, it, it, it's, it feels good. That dollar saved feels good. If you, it could, that dollar saved could be invested and make a dollar fifteen. 
Sage words, sage words. The sage, sage. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we have pictures of our dads that are going to go up. You're going to see them, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our dads, their their journey. We're going to pay tribute to them um, and uh, describe a little bit the photos that we have. It's, uh, it's, um, it's a trip down memory lane. Uh, and then that's it, man. We're just going to talk about our dads today because I think they deserve it. And I think that uh, nobody really talks about dads out there. So I think uh, uh, it's about time. It's a guy thing. It's a guy thing. Not being able to talk about your feelings or about your feelings of others, especially your feelings towards another guy. Everybody can kind of talk about feelings towards their kids, yeah. feelings towards their wives or, or their moms. But when it's for the dad, it's tough. It's like, ah, so you know, true. it's like you, you pretend so he's li- you, it's like you think that he, you pretend that he's listening, and if he would listen to you, he would think that's not cool. It's awkward. <laughs> it's awkward. It's a little awkward for everyone, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, let's do it. You know let's what? I, I think it's still us. I think it's just how. Like, I'm sure there's families out there that have been like, okay, express your feelings, and I love you, and I love you too, dad. No, I'm no. sure. I'm sure it's just not us. It's not our reality. Yeah. We 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 weren't expressive that way with uh, with our dads, and neither were our dads towards us. I mean, you know, in our family, we don't say I love you. We don't say I'm sorry. I don't do <laughs> No, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, those are two things you just, you feel them. You mean them. You just don't say them. You don't so, outer um, them. <laughs> they're a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. so, so let's get on to this. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll am i go first, and then we'll do Chris, and then we'll do George. Um, so you guys, uh, you saw the picture that I sent you. Um, this, when I, when I think about my dad, that is the picture that I that, that just immediately comes to my mind, right? This, this, is a, this is a picture that was taken up north, uh, and just you know, just in general, you know, my dad's story. My dad, um, my dad was. Can I, can I before you continue? Yeah, yeah. That boat in the picture. Yeah. You, you and your dad have told me about him building. Yeah, yeah. That's the <laughs> yeah, one, right? Right. Yeah, man. It's he, legendary. Can legendary. you put it up? Why don't you put it on, man? Let's we're gonna, on. Just, we're, gonna, we're gonna put it in post. No, or you want me to put it on now? Whatever. Whatever's easy. Do you want to see it now? I mean, well, should... it's kind of nice to see it while you're talking. Okay. okay, so let me let me put it on. Hold on. Sorry about that. All right, there you go. There you go. So, just quickly, so that, that yeah, so that's my dad. So basically, there's my 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 little brother sitting in the front. Then there's me. Then in the back, there's a, a good friend John uh, who we grew up with together. And there's my sister. And then there's my dad. Uh, th- th- this th- this is honestly the, the the picture that has stamped itself into my mind. You know, when I think about my dad and everything and that that, uh, that he did for us and all that kind of stuff. Like my dad was born into a he was the last kid born into a family of eight, right? So a little coastal village in the southern southeastern uh, part of Greece, a little village called the uh, Kiparisi. Uh, you know, uh, grew up uh, like basically every uh, kid in post-war Europe, you know, uh, poverty, all that kind of stuff. At the age of 12, 13, I think he left with his uh, older brother and a sister. They went, uh, they lived in Athens. He studied to be a mechanic in the boats, uh, served in the Navy. And then after the Navy, he uh, jumped on a ship and traveled the, the world uh, working as a mechanic. And eventually that led him to, uh, to Montreal. Came to Montreal. He already had three siblings living here. And uh, that's it. I'm not convinced that, uh, in fact, he's told me that he wasn't convinced himself that this was going to be a long-term thing. You know, he was, okay, I'll go visit my siblings. Uh, You know, I'll try it out for a year or two. And then, you know, I'll go back home. Kind of like, I think pretty much every immigrant at that time was thinking, right? It's only temporary. Things are hard back home. Let me start a new life. And uh, hopefully, you know, make it. Uh, and come back to Greece, you know. So that was the mentality. Over 50 years later, he's still here, right? He has yeah. family, kids, grandkids, and uh, and that's it. So he started working in the construction industry. He was working as a machinist in a factory that worked with aluminum. And essentially, they would do all the preparations for uh, major infrastructure pro- uh, projects in Montreal and pretty much all over the world, skyscrapers and that stuff. So anything that you could fix with aluminum window frames, door frames, uh, skylights, uh, anything. He was, uh, he was doing that kind of work. And uh, that's it. You know? So it's a, it's a pretty impressive journey that he's had, especially knowing that pretty much 
probably more than half of everything built in Montreal, like throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s, crossed through his hands, right? So um, it's it's just interesting sometimes to see it from his perspective. You know, someone that comes to Montreal sees a city how it is, and then now, like 50 years later, when he looks at the city, he realizes, fuck, you know, look, look, I contributed to this, right? Like, I mean, all these things kind of, I lived it, I felt it, I worked it. Uh, and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And he's always had this big dream. I remember growing up, we always wanted to have a boat so that we can go fishing uh, in the lake. This picture is taken at, uh, at our country place up north. Uh, probably the one and only thing that my parents invested in. Uh, like all their savings went into that house, basically, just so that we can have a getaway where we can uh, ultimately enjoy ourselves and do a bunch of things that, uh, you know, probably a lot of kids uh, in the 80s didn't have that opportunity to. Um, and that's it. So I, I remember, you know, this was th- uh, the time where my dad was like a different person, you know, like Monday to Friday, every single day, you know, you come back home from the noise, from the, from the, from the factory, you're stressed. Uh, and on Friday evening when we would leave to go up north, it was like a different person because you know that this is where we're going. We're going to relax. We're going to let go. And it was just outdoors, you know? So all our summers uh, were spent there. All our winters were spent there. And I remember, you know, uh, early on, we, we adopted these activities, these outdoor activities with my dad. And uh, what I found amazing is that everything that we did there could have easily just been bought right like i mean fishing rods we could have bought fishing rods we could have bought slingshots bird traps but never did he think okay let me go buy them and you know i'll you know we'll set them up and it'll be fun for the kids for him it was let's just live the experience right let let me fix a bow and arrow for them let me fix them a slingshot let me fix them a whistle from a tree bark (laughs) you know uh even the fishing rods i mean we didn't have fishing rods we had long branches that he had fixed and he had attached a fishing line on it so like i mean there was no real nothing so you would you would throw the line as far as it went and then i have no idea how we would pick it up so the story behind this boat is that we got really into fishing with my dad you know and um, because we had no way to fish like further into the, the lake we would always drive um, uh, to the next lake that was accessible and uh, we would park at the side of the lake and we would fish on the side of the lake and we were always busting his chops we're like come on man we want to go further mm-hmm. Look at everyone, they have a boat. And he's like, oh, I'll fix one. So, like, this is where I come back to what I was saying. I mean, obviously, a couple hundred bucks to buy a boat back in the day, perhaps more expensive. I don't know. But it was definitely an easy solution. All right, we'll save some money. A couple hundred bucks, we'll buy a boat. It's going to last for a number of years. You know, we'll, you know we'll, 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 we'll profit from that investment kind of thing. But it wasn't the point. The point was, let me build it. Let me, let me have that experience, you know, with the kids and show them. And that's how it happened. He, uh, he brought a bunch of barrels, that, that, that blue thing around the boat. These are big bins that they had at work, I guess. And he, all the structure is made with aluminum. And then the inside, uh, he attached the floor lats, you know. Uh, and uh, that's how he built the boat. And this was a huge thing, man. Like, this is the pride of his uh, existence up north. I mean, George, I think I've, is that the one I've been on? Or was it a red one? No, there was no red one. This is the, uh, I think we had, when you came up north. Uh, with, with Lazo. Yeah, yeah, it was early high school. We had that. That boat. It, it, look, I'm, I'm about seven or eight years old in this picture. So this is <laughs> school, you know, like, uh, what is it? Grade three, grade three, grade four, somewhere, somewhere there. Uh, that boat, we had it all the way through high school, I think. Like, you know, and then we, we, we bought another one. I think when you came up north, we had already bought another, like a real boat. <laughs> okay, okay, it was okay, it was another one. We had, we had both. I remember going with both because there were a lot. Uh, yeah, so that's that's it, man. And this was a big deal. Like this, like he invited all his friends, family. Like there were fifty people that came up north for the inauguration, right? Uh, uh-huh. It was a huge thing. <laughs> We had yeah, yeah. poems and uh, all these things. There was a big speech, and you know they they, they put the, the the boat in the water, and then there was a big barbecue, and they partied and they danced, and uh, it was uh, a big moment for the uh, for the guy. And uh, so yeah, every time I think about my dad and our childhood and uh, growing up, this is the picture that just comes uh, to my mind. This moment right here, right? I mean, just a, a guy that would do anything to. Um, kind of you know uh, live different experiences with uh, with the kids and up north was just the perfect gateway for that uh and uh so yeah man that's um that's the man right there the myth and the legend 
So cool. yeah, that's uh, that's a story about my dad, man. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's still he. I mean, he, we still have a place. He's still there now. Uh, ever since the coronavirus, <laughs> he's, and he's waiting uh-huh. uh, to drop his boat in again. I don't think he missed one year. I mean, he—that's what he does. He goes there and he fishes uh, all through uh, all through the summer, and uh, and that's it. Yeah. You guys catch some nice stuff up there? Oh, dude, man, plenty. Like uh, my look. If there's one thing that my father is passionate about, like he used to hunt a lot when he, he was, uh, I guess, that age or younger, but then it stopped. You know, I mean, uh, he really got into fishing. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, we, we caught some big stuff like big bass, uh, pike, uh, there used to be perch also in the lake. There's no more. Um, yeah, no, he, he, he would, at some point he, he would bring in like dozens of fish, uh, in the, from the lake. Uh, yeah, no, uh, good moments, good moments up north and, uh, it, you know, if there's, um, if there's one thing I took away from my dad uh, I mean there's plenty of things that you know we learned from him uh, patience is definitely not one of them <laughs> but, uh, I think uh, from all the things I mean I think it has to be humility you know the guy taught us how to be humble just you know uh, live kind of below the radar respect everyone and uh, demand that we are respected as well and just be humble you know respect everyone um, hold everyone as equals and uh, just do what you have to do. And, uh, yeah, the, I think that's probably one of the things that um, I take away the most from uh, my dad. I think uh, his, uh, his humility. Uh, and, yeah, that's, uh, that's the man right there. Yeah, awesome, man. Look, I, I kind of grew up with you, George. So I, I, when, you, when you share the story, I kind of understand where you're going with everything. And I, he's definitely a guy that builds – Yes, for the result, but he also builds for the journey. But he's very proud when the result is there, whether it's the deck, the patio, yeah. the, the boat, yep. anything you build. He's a builder. He's like a little bit more like my dad. I think your dad is a little bit more, has a little bit more finesse on the building. My dad is a little bit more. Yeah, not anymore. Uh, uh, he used to be very detail oriented. If you ask my dad not to do something, it's botched. I mean, you know, yeah. my, sister, yeah. <laughs> my sister bought a house a couple of years back and they wanted to uh, remove. I, I don't even remember what was on the floor. So they wanted to remove it and just, you know, uh, get to the wood and then fix the wood. <laughs> and I can't remember what was on top. So my father's like, okay, we'll just cut it out and then I'll, I'll cut out a piece and then we'll, we'll just break it off from there, you know, because he couldn't find an angle where to, to rip it off from. And he cut right through the wood on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, this big rectangle that he cut through, you know. Uh, but definitely... Uh, so look, like I said, I mean, these were everything that we've done could have either been done by a professional, could have been bought, uh, but it wasn't the case. It was okay. We'll we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I get that. Maybe, I get that. Maybe it was the ego that I'm not going to spend money for something that I can build. <clears throat> but I think more than anything, it was let me just you know live the experience and like you said, the journey and the adventure with these kids. Let me teach them how to make a bird trap. You know what I mean? Uh, and we spend hours in the forest and we, we would do all these things with the guy, you know? Yeah. And what's amazing is how like really you and your brother have become really amazing builders. It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. It yeah. uh, yeah, doesn't matter. The, the quality time is what it's about. Absolutely. It's That's what it's about. That's what, what it's about. Doing. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Let's, uh, funny, though, Chris. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to Chris. I'm going to put up a picture. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, my picture is just, I, I found a picture of, like, look, uh, I'm not going to really talk about, there's no specific story in that picture, but that's my dad. And um, the upbringing, I think his upbringing was very, very simple. I think it's kind of like your dad, George, um, left school very early. I think it was a grade six education. And uh, went in the boats and just landed in Montreal and started his life. So very independent, very autonomous early on. And um, grade six education, but a PhD in common sense. That's one thing I got to say about my dad. My dad is very, very like a genius in practicality. So not an intellectual, didn't read many books, but just had wit. Wit and wisdom and in and, and his simplicity and how he was able to really uh, simplify things. So um, this guy was a man of of rules. There was rules, definitely rules in the house. 
but gave you the breathing space. He gave you the zone. Like, so the rules were set. They were strict. They were stringent. But there was always the room for you to make it on your own. So that's, that's something I've always taken from him. Um, he would always, um, he was a cook, right? So uh, he would say, uh, he, this, is, this is what's weird about my dad, because this, this is, I think, the major story about me and my dad and why till this day we're like best friends in, in a way that I still hang out with him. Like we go shopping together. Like if I have a spare time, I'll go hang out with him. So, so we're, we're close, but he wasn't always close when I was younger because he always worked. Mm. right he was a working man and he valued work a lot but this is where where I, I think the biggest lesson is the biggest lesson is he 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 was a cook so he fast food he did he had a restaurant then he worked from other people but he basically flipped burgers right so my dad got ahead flicking burgers and he would use a dysphemism and always tell me like he wouldn't say he was a cook he would say he's a dishwasher to me so he would use that dysphemism to try to talk me out of not doing that and studying, right? That yeah. was his way of telling me, go to school and don't become a dishwasher like me. So he would downplay the cook. Yeah. And what he never realized is that what, what was the disappointment in his life or the failure, which he considered that a failure, was what I was really the most proud of. Like, I'm, I'm the most proud of him because of that. Right. Because he did it. He got it done. He, 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 there was no excuse he was never sick. He always went. And I saw that opportunity and putting all the sacrifices with that opportunity, I was able to make better choices in my life. Mm -hmm. So that for me, that was a big lesson. Yeah. So him being really disappointed and considering his, um, his job or career uh, a failure sure. is what I was really the most proud. And today, so even today when I hear people, oh, you know, I'm working to the restaurants and they, they, they kind of feel bad. It's like, no, man. That's the opportunity. Yeah. Everybody's got to take their opportunity. Every, everybody's got to figure out a way to do what they got to do. And if I had to put a slogan for my dad, it's just do it. Just get it done. You know what I mean? No excuses. Just get it done. But go to school, right? And this is what we've, I mean, we've probably spoken about it in other podcasts, but he was the guy that wanted me to go to school so I could get what he didn't have. And you guys could relate to that, right? That, that, that's the kind of the immigrant parent the Greek mentality. It was like, and that's why in a way you get uh, children of immigrant parents that kind of appreciate that sacrifice, right? That was afforded, like the opportunity that was afforded to them because of the, the parents' sacrifice. Right. I find we're able to resonate with that a lot. So my dad was that kind of guy, the immigrant that worked hard, put his foot, uh, head down, kept working, but there was always a wisdom. There's always a lesson. And I think I've picked that up a lot. There's always a lesson. Like he, he would, he would always, any angle we would look at things, he would say, here's the lesson. And then, and then he left me alone, you yeah. know? And I think he was able to, with his non-intellectual kind of mind, really give me a lot of wisdom, I find. Um, other things, the thing that stuck with me the most, obviously said he would say this in Greek, but I've translated it in English, and I've actually heard other people say it. But he would say it, and I still tell my kid, he would also say, if you do what's easy now, your life will be hard. But if you do what's hard now, your life will be easy. Right, right, right. And I think for me, that's one of the most important things that uh, I've taken from him and, and, and I teach my kid about it. So, yeah, so that's my dad, a man of simple words, little words. I find a, a lot of wisdom, um, doesn't talk a lot. And till this day, sometimes silence I share with him is better than conversations I have with other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's that kind of guy. I look up to him, and like I said, in my family, we don't say I'm sorry. We don't say I'm sorry. We don't say I love you. I don't think I've ever said it. <laughs> I don't think he's ever said it. But but you, uh, but you know, when when you look at each other, when you hug, and yeah. look, we've done projects together. Like he, like I said, uh, George, uh, like your dad, he's a builder, and I kind of well, the reason I think I'm an engineer today is because I kind of saw him always building, and I don't know whether it was because. It, no, it was probably because they didn't want to pay any professional to do it. <laughs> he ended up doing it, building it himself. It was not always perfect, but it always served his functionality. And one thing he never cared about was the aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was always about application, functionality. If it works, it's fine. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Happy Father's Day to this guy. Uh, I don't look anything like him. <laughs> yeah. What you guys see on the picture, and if you guys know my mom, you know I'm a carbon copy of my mom. 
What are you talking about? But, that's, that's uh, a good image. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but this is a this is a little man that I respect and I love a lot. So that's it. That, that's it. So I didn't really get into the story, guys. But the, whenever I think of my dad, what I said is what comes up. Yeah. And, and 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 we've seen that too. I mean, the fact that we've known each other for so long, and we've seen your dad in action too. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been one too many times uh, in your at your house and seen him with his little jean shorts and the the white tank top. <laughs> always building something, always fixing something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. money, and a cigarette. And oh, yeah, thank God he he he's quit. But yeah, always a cigarette, a hammer, oh. a cigarette. Oh, he did finally, yeah. Yeah, he's quit for many years. Oh, I have a visitor. Oh. Put him on. Put him on. Visitor. Hold on, because I blocked the door. Edit this out. Hold on. You locked the door. Yeah, <laughs> I can't uh, open it. What else they gonna do? They won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> knocking. George left. He went to unlock the door because he locked it. So yeah, man. So it's it's hard to put. Uh, Everything I think I've learned from my dad or everything you've learned from your dad, think about it. It's hard to put in about five, six minutes. You no. can't do that, right? Like, I think I could write a book. No, for and, sure. Um, sure it's, it, it's, it's the everyday. It's the everyday. And you know what? It took it took me to become a dad. I'm sure you guys could relate to this. Hey, Philip, what's up? What's going on, big guy? <laughs> it, it, it took me to become a dad to understand a lot of what he would say. Oh, wow. when I was younger, a lot of the stuff he would say would just come from one ear and go, 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 come go. out of the other. No, you can't. You, you can't understand it. You can't understand it, or at least, yeah, you're not relating to it. And uh, now, a lot of the stuff is like, oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. You know, like how many times? It. Look, I, I started. I started working when I was like. 40. I think from the very first day that I started working, I can't even count how many times i've heard my parents but uh, specifically my dad save your money save your money put some money aside put some like it's been it was a constant thing growing up i never saved oh, yeah. i never saved money because when you're 16 17 and you suddenly work and you have more money than your other friends because they don't work or whatever it's it's like this power trip man it's like okay what do we need you know okay don't worry i got you and you know what i mean and then when you start driving you can take the car and it's just spend 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 and now yeah. you look back and you're like what an idiot like if you were to count the money that you've been making since the age of 15 <laughs> you know no yeah 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 Ugh, man yeah but that but that's that definitely a, a saver not a spender definitely a saver like he he he'd, he'd save everything yeah. And you know what? He rested very little. That's actually another one of his sayings. One of his sayings was, uh, 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 "Rest is is a necessity, not the not the objective. Right? Resting is necessary for you to get up and do more. Yeah. Sometimes, he, sometimes I remember him saying things like, "Oh, you know what? In four hours, I could sleep four hours and do two shifts. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was relative to the shift and the work, yeah. right?" And the result. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you if you could get four hours, you could do two shifts, no problem. I've done it. You yeah. know, and many times I remember, like with my mom when they owned the restaurant, like he he would sleep in the restaurant sometimes. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah. He would sleep in the restaurant sometimes. He'd do like uh, seven days. Most of the time, he'd do seven days. Yeah. So yeah, the the work ethic and the hard work um, was definitely something that uh, I observed. I observed. Yeah, I think, but I think that's typical in most Sorry. of the, the immigrant families, right? I mean, if there's one thing that you can take away from your parents is the the work ethic. I mean, it's yeah, work ethic. It's undeniable. Yeah. It's undeniable. Yeah, yeah. You know, they came here with that one purpose, like to make a better life for themselves, and that better life transitioned through work. You know. Well, yeah, man, because the the whole model, their whole model is live on less to give us more. Mm. Yeah. Right. And it was like, you know what? I'll live on less, whether it's buying the small, like I'm talking about through the point of view of my dad. Like for him, living on less is I won't spend on the jeans. I won't spend on this. I won't spend on the accessories. I won't spend on the dude that I won't spend on anything. But if my kid needs that, I'll get it for him. If he needs that education, that may be private school, I'll get it to him. If he needs this because he needs to fix his teeth, I'll get into him. Mm. And um, yeah, I think that's what, um, that's what uh, the underlying tone is of an. I won't say immigrant parent because a lot of parents think like that, but you're right. It is what uh, the main focus of an immigrant parent was. Yeah. Because uh, look, we, we, if, in a way we all had kind of similar parents and we all see, we all see, uh, we all see the, 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 the virtues in our parents. We see them in, in our friends' parents as well. Yeah. Because it's almost as if they come from that same mold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
You know, I, I wonder sometimes and I question because, you know, I, I, I worked a lot with immigrants um, uh, over the last years. And one thing that you, you, you notice is that their success, the, the immigrant success always skips a generation. So the immigrant that comes here doesn't really live the success. And I don't want to generalize because there are some immigrants that came and, you know, they did well. Mm-hmm. But in general... Uh, or more often than not, the you know the immigrant that that, that comes here is going to sacrifice his or her life, and it's the kids that are going to profit from that, right? It's the kids that are going to have a better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. And very often, I question if at some point early on when they arrived here, did they realize that? Right? Did they say, "Shit, this is not what we had in mind. Uh, fuck, this is going to be harder than I thought." Uh, you know what I mean? And 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 if they did think that, at which point did they say, you know what, fuck it, it's for my kids and whatever, I'll just eat the shit. And uh, like, I, I, I just question if they were aware that they missed that boat and they weren't even going to be on it, you know? When- I don't know. It, it's a good question, George. I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I don't think I have an answer. But what I do know is that whether they were educated or not, they had a pretty, pretty good grasp and a very, very vivid understanding on principles of family and foundation of family. I, I, got, agree, with, I agree with what you're saying, Chris, and to, to what George was saying. They didn't commit to anything that they weren't going to back up with all of their personal effort. So whatever they committed to, they thought of it. They knew what they were going to sacrifice moving forward. They mm-hmm. chose yeah, they were, they, I'm, I'm sure they weren't expecting a result. It, and, and you know what? It, yeah, it was always like, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this. And in the back of their mind, it's like, I hope, I hope there's a gratitude. I hope there's appreciation for this. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it goes in the back of their mind. But what I'm trying to say is that without having been told or been educated, man, they understood the foundation. And the foundation yeah. today is what, what you don't see, or at least what's cracking today. Yeah. There's cracks in the foundation of family today, guys. I don't know if you see it. I don't know if you guys, uh, the, 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 the f- families don't eat together as much as they used to eat. Uh, sitting around the table is not as sacred as it used to be. Yeah. Having the conversation, the one-on-one is not what it used to be. So you're starting to see a dent in the family. And I think them looking back at this, it's like they're glad they, they didn't sacrifice the family. They knew how to keep it together. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I often think about that too. You know how our way of life has been altered significantly, usually obviously through technology. I mean, right now you're on your phone, even you're you're sitting with your kids, and your phone rings, and you're preoccupied. You're looking at it, or you're you know you're scrolling through Twitter or whatever the fuck you're doing. Uh, and you know the fact that that whole uh, environment didn't even exist back then, right? There was there was one TV if you had mm-hmm. it. And if it had a TV, it was black and white. And if it wasn't black and white, it had that knob that had four yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? But everybody was around it. Yeah, no, but that was the only piece of technology that was in the house. Yeah. Everything else was, uh, like you said, it, it revolved around the family unit, right? It was the yeah. family court. Yeah. You know? Uh, now, everyone is in, their, you know, in each other's corner doing whatever the hell they're doing with an iPad or, you know? Look, I don't know. I mean, it's, this is the way of life and you have to kind of accept what it is. But like you said, yeah, I don't know if you, you can even compare now. No, it's different. It's different. Then, right. Yeah. An- another thing when George, look, uh, we'll let you uh, tell your story with your dad, man. Just one more point here is, um, I lost my thought. I totally lost my thought. Right on. <laughs> We're saying how <laughs> like you can't compare today uh with what we had uh back then oh yeah 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 so yeah i I was i was gonna make the point that another thing was that uh, i'm sure we all have great respect for our parents and you know what if you were to break it down if you were to break down the relationship uh between friendship and parenthood they cared about being parents more than being friends and i find today uh the people that have teenagers that I, i observe right my friends is uh, they're, they're trying to be their friends a lot without being the parents. They're, parents today are afraid to be hated by their kids by trying to discipline them. Mm-hmm. 
And I find what the old timers did well was that, yeah, I'll be your friend when it's time to be your friend. But 80% of the time, I'm your parent. So yeah. I'll tell you things you don't want to hear. I might tell you things that, that you definitely don't want to hear. Uh, I, will, I will set the record straight. But you knew that it was done because they loved you. But you knew they were going to win that argument because mm. they weren't trying to be your friend. And I find that with my dad, that's, that's why there's a tremendous respect because, yeah, we're friends. Today, we're the best friends. But there was the respect always there. I never saw him like a buddy, like I'll make fun of him or something like that. Like uh, there was a respect. There was a distance. Yeah. There was this nice uh, distance. I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. But that distance was respect. But that distance is what kept us close together later on in life, I find. Yeah, yeah. And you, can't, you, you need that little gap. It, you, can, you, can, you cannot have the same relationship you have uh, with your kid the way he has his relationships with his friends. Your son cannot have a relationship with his dad the way he has a relationship with another friend of his. Yeah. That is very important. And I find today that's becoming like, uh, like you, sometimes you don't even see the barrier. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, George, man. I just I got into this mode. Um, no, it's good. Run with it. Yeah, yeah go. Yeah. Go. Talk, tell <clears throat> us about your dad. Not much to say about the guy. A lot like your dad's. Uh, he's a, he was a simple man. Yeah, we lost him about eight years ago, like you guys know. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, I see him a little differently now than I did when he was around, you know, with the, the picture you see there, that's how I remember him in my head, the way he looked, the way he, he stood firm and clean shaved and always, always uh, presentable. Um, he came from a little place in Greece. He was born during World War II. Uh, he told me stories of his neighbors eating the breadcrumbs off his feet. You know, <laughs> it was, uh, he worked in construction from the age of 12, building roads around his village. Uh, being abused by the older guys who couldn't handle the, the weight. They used to make him pick everything up. He was a bull. Um, he came here, uh, he immigrated, I think he was 26. Came by himself. He had, a, he had a relative who he stayed with for several months, but uh, then he was on his own, then my mom and so on. Uh, he always worked as a, in maintenance uh, so at night he would, after the offices would close, he's the guy who would go clean up the desks and clean the toilets and mop the floors and all this kind of stuff. And always remind us of what he did for a living. So he must try to drive us out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, it's the same technique, man. It's just... and, he, and, and, he, and he did it his whole, he did it his whole uh, career in Canada. That's what he did. He, and he, he wasn't embarrassed of it. He was he did everything he did. He did with pride. Uh, if he took ownership, he, he delivered and. The guy mopped and cleaned toilets and paid for private school. You know what I mean? He he was proud of the result. He, he, he gave it for the result. You know, he used to always tell me stuff like, "Life is simple, man. Just expect to work a lot. Don't expect to sleep a lot. Yeah. Mm. Expect for, like you're gonna be tired. Get ready. Like don't don't fool yourself. Without that, you won't have enough. You won't you won't be happy in other ways. You know, he was a man of very few words. He loved mm. his garden, you know. He, he always went by example, you know, always uh, tried to make us proud, you know. Be proud of who you are. Be, don't embarrass yourself, don't because you're embarrassing your family. You're embarrassing more than just yourself, you know. Try to keep, like George's father, like you were saying, stay below the radar, keep it clean, and take the values and do something with it, you know. Yeah. He was. Uh, we all miss him, and he was. Uh, he was the patriarch. He was. Uh, he had his own plan, and we had to follow. And when <laughs> he spoke, you shut the fuck up, and <laughs> he was very authoritative. Yeah. So if he spoke a lot, you were in trouble. If he didn't speak a lot, he was happy. That's how it was. But you understood him. That was that was the thing about him. You understood what he wanted. It wasn't complicated. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's. It's um, it's fascinating to me how you know obviously we can relate to to today's you know um, uh, living expenses you know I don't know if they're equivalent back then but you know the fact that they did the the work that they did and they got paid what they got paid let's understand each other here I mean you know the salaries haven't changed much right I mean <laughs> it's still you know these are the types of jobs that don't have the best conditions, um, the best salaries. And to think that they put all the kids through private education, that they managed to give their kids 
everything, that it didn't deprive them of anything, and even more, uh, I, I sometimes think back to that and think, you know, how the hell did they even manage to do that, right? I mean, you're looking at... 60-hour weeks. Yeah, but I mean, you're looking now and you're thinking, obviously, we have, we, we have way more things. You know, I mean, now we have two cars. You know, back then, you know, Chris didn't have a car. You know what I mean? We have them. No. Like, what? We, we come no, my, my parents still don't have a car. Yeah, like, see, we, we come from, like, the generation where it was normal to have friends that had no car. Like, that was normal. It was, oh, okay, okay, cool, no problem. We'll pass yeah. back up. Like, that was normal. You tell someone now that you have no car, it's like, you're the weird one. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. It was always, it was also a time where you could have seven passengers in your car and nobody said anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No seatbelts and smoking and holding a, holding a beer, holding a bottle of beer in the front seat. You're holding an infant with a cigarette. Yeah, so, yeah. Sometimes I wonder, you know, like, how do these people just make these things happen, right? I mean, you look at now and you're struggling. Uh, we're not struggling. They we're committed, George. George, it was commitment, man. It was, it was, a, it was so commitment it was, and zero, zero distraction. Yeah. And, and everything you described, it wasn't enough to slow them down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he, exactly. Yeah, Those zero like, distractions. This is what I have to do. <laughs> yeah. There's other ways to get it all done. I don't know about you guys, but you know what? Uh, there was no... Um, I couldn't tell my parents uh, I'm not going to school. <laughs> what? Like, I'm sick. What does that mean? No, no. For me, it was like, that was like, so what it's like, what does that mean? You're sick. It's I'm fine. Gonna, I'm going to tell you something. I, you have I had to, a, you had to be physically yeah, it, no, it's just, no, no, no. It's like, it's like go, don't worry. We'll go to the doctor after. <laughs> We have time. <laughs> I had an ankle problem, like Achilles tendon ankle problem. I couldn't step on my foot. I was, I was, I was losing it. I'm like, I can't go. I'm like, he's like, no, no, hold on. He went, he went in the closet. I don't know why he had this. He brings me a cane. Uh, he had a cane. We nobody's ever used a cane in the house, and he had one. He like, take this and go. Go talk to the nurse at the school, but go to class. You go to class. There's no reason for you to stay home. Go to school. Oh, man. It was so funny, man. The cane. Yeah, I was yeah. crying oh, laughing while I was crying at the thing. Or another thing in contrast today, man. It's like I remember eating, right? And we would, uh, I would finish my homework. And uh, he would finish late, so we would eat very late. So I would wait for him so we can sit around the table. And he, it would be 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., so I had to go to bed, obviously, right? And it was, um, we would sit by the table, and, and that's where it was. It was always like, well, how was school? You know, and it wasn't like, it was questions like, what did you learn and what did you do? But a lot of it was like, I hope you were good to your teacher. I hope you were listening. I hope you were asking questions. I hope you're respecting your teacher. Right? How many yeah. conversations do you think happen like that today? How many parents today, like our generation, we, we, we've had sit the- down with our kids and say, "Hey, um, get us more. Do you respect your teachers?" You know. You know, we've had this conversation before, uh, the three of us, where you know, back in the day, if you got punished, you came home and you got punished again because you got punished in school. Right? It was like yeah, yeah, yeah. respect your teacher. The teacher was right, no matter what. No matter what. You did something stupid, and the teacher was right. It was well, always, yeah. It was always credit to the teacher. Today, and I mean, you can probably attest because your 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 wife is teaching. My sister is a teacher in elementary school. Mm-hmm. It's completely different. Like the it's not the same thing. In the parent walks in and te- is telling the teacher how to do her job, how to teach. Like that didn't exist, man. It's no, like, no. You it, know why? Because because want to want to stand up to your you know to your kid, but you know. Just trust the teachers, and I'm not saying they're all good. Maybe there are some bad ones. We know that there were some bad ones. We, but we, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It wasn't about that. Yeah. It was word. For, it was the 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 teacher was the substitute of the parent for between eight and three p.m. Yeah. And you just had to deal with that. That word for word, my dad would tell me, when I'm not there, your teachers are in charge. Yeah. Right, so it's the level of respect you show me, you show them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You well, know, it was also a lesson you had to figure out how to deal with different characters because it's coming, man. Life, life is full of those weirdos, and you sometimes you gotta just make it work. Just make yeah. it work. Maybe if the teacher was aggressive or mean or whatever the, the case may be. Yeah, it was part of life. Out. Figure it adjust, out. Exactly. Adjust yeah. to the person. They're an authority figure. Adjust because it could get you in worse in trouble. Adjust. Yeah. Stay out of jail. Yeah, that's what it was, man. No excuses mentality, man. I remember that saying many times. No excuses. Don't give me excuses. Stop with the excuses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
just it's like stop with that. <laughs> nobody hears it. Nobody believes them. Like nobody believes your excuses. So just stop. You know, it's like this. <laughs> George. You now, you know, obviously, like you said, your your father's no longer with us. But you know, now that you're a dad, you know, like obviously, you probably think about the guy every day. But how much more? Uh, do you think of appreciate. him? Do you appreciate him now that you're a dad? I mean, obviously, there's you know Father's Day is you know just a couple of days away. Uh, I, uh, is this time of the year maybe more special? Uh, or you know, I mean, do like I just want to I just want to know what goes through. Well, like like we said last time, Father's Day for him was was something completely pointless. Yeah, bro. never knew it was Father's Day when it was Father's Day. So that's yeah. it. <laughs> People told him. People, people, people told, told him you're going out for Father's Day. Show up. We gave him something, and he's like, "What's this for? It's, it's Father's Day. When? Yesterday? Like when was this?" Yeah, yeah. So it's not like we had really a bonding moment. But there's other things. There's other things. But when I when I find myself losing my shit with my kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you a of, question, George. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Is there something you wish you could tell him now that you weren't didn't you didn't have a chance to tell him? <sighs> Fuck, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I drove him. Yeah. I was, I was aggressive too. I, I didn't. I, I was, I was just as proud or hard-headed as him. So I didn't always take it well. You know, I, I rebelled a lot. It was the, it's my personality too. So mm. we, we tended to clash a lot. But as, as time went on, I, I saw that it came from a good place. You know, you didn't, you don't. It doesn't always strike you that way. When you're a kid, you think you know it all. Everything that's a, a bit mm. of a hurdle. You're, you're blaming your parents for everything. Like yeah, but, but it always, always mad, comes, you know, it all, whether they're right or wrong, because they could be wrong. And I'm somebody that, that I see that it's like, no, he hates his father. No, no, no. I don't hate my parents. It just, I know when they're wrong and I don't mind. I accept it in my head and I'll even tell yeah. them sometimes. Yeah, and that's yeah. fine. A lot of people are stuck there. It's like, they yeah. think that if they think that their parents are wrong, they're disrespecting them. No, you're not. <laughs> they yeah. could be wrong and they could be right. But whether they were right or wrong, you always knew it came from a good place. And also, as kids, you somehow expect them to be perfect. So uh, you think you're disappointed, but shut up. You're not disappointed. Man. You're just, you're just <laughs> realizing they're human. Yeah. They're, not, they're not perfect beings. Don't, don't shit on them for not being perfect. Because when you get to that age, you won't be perfect either. I think, I think that you understand more once you become a parent and you realize yeah. that there is no such thing as perfection. And, and kids call you out. <laughs> <laughs> but they were rough. They were rough. They were rough. They weren't, they, they weren't like, oh, look, I know, yeah, I know also your dad's right. I'm going to something uh, that you said a long time ago. Our dads, in terms of like patience and, uh, and all that kind of stuff, they weren't ready for us before the age of 19. They had no patience for infants or children. <laughs> They, yeah. they needed they needed young adults before we yeah. could be, could be handed over to them. We should have yeah. been young adults before we were handed over to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Twelve years old, you're taking. Because yeah. anything before that it would yeah, make them look them. like maniacs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they were rough. They were rough. You know, they, they weren't polished, and it's fine. And it's I fine. And you, you know what? It gives it gives it a, it gives it gives the family a dimension. I'm gonna go back to what I said. His neighbors ate his crumbs off his feet. Yeah, and he built cement roads at the age of twelve, carrying the hundred pound bags. Twelve years old. Yeah, yeah. Being told by by fifty old man, you're the young guy. You can go do it. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and they weren't afraid to show it, man. Like I remember this. Uh, like it's funny. Like you can't say this stuff now, but in context back then, it's not even a bad thing. And I'm gonna say it. I remember once uh, we're sitting on a table, and I was upset about something. My mom, like I'd done something at school, and my mom was a little bit upset, and she was like, you know, the the the, the she's like. Uh, you'll see when your dad comes home and tell him everything. You're gonna get, you know, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh no, I can't. No, man, I don't want him to come home. So she she was saying something, and I felt like she was kind of like exaggerating a little bit. And I didn't say shut up, mom. I didn't say shut up. I, I you know what I said? I said, mom, be quiet, please, like that. Like I said, be quiet, please, in Greek. Dude, he turns around. <laughs> This is, your dad now. this is my dad now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like there was respect. There was things you didn't do. Mother was was something like sacred and noble, right? You know. Well, he looked at me in the face, in the eyes, dead in the eyes, and said, "If you ever say that again to your mom, I will put you down and step on your neck." <laughs> <laughs> but he never did it. 
<laughs> and just saying that, right. he, told, yeah. he, he just defined the barriers for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one expression made me think that I'm never going to say that again, ever. And I didn't even, guys, remember, like I'm translating it to Greek, but I didn't say shut up. Yeah, yeah. I said in a very good way, be quiet, like please. Yeah. Like st- stop saying that. That, that yeah. that's what it translates to. It wasn't shut up. Yeah. Dude. And you know that, you know that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there was rules, right? You had you had to come correct. There was no there was no bullshit. You had, when it was time for you to speak, say the story, don't give me blah 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 blah, say what it is and we'll deal with it. You know? And you know what? It's like I appreciated it that i still appreciate that like yeah. i'm glad that happened to me and it gave me perspective then for today see me on the patients on the patients front um and you know just go back to what george was saying you know, like they were they were pretty much built to receive a kid when they were let me introduce you <laughs> no <laughs> you're ready and i totally i totally get that and that's why for us, it, it was also very different because I got to see both aspects of that, right? Where during the week, it was like we had to be saints, you know, because it was like the man is coming home. Imagine from like six in the morning until three, all you're hearing is hammers and drills. And hey, <laughs> the last thing you want coming home is to have your kids just keep breaking shit, you know? And, and I, I forgive him for all the times I got a beating, you know what I mean? Because we were good kids, man. We weren't, like, me and my brother were not good kids. And, uh, but the, 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 the flip side of the coin is that we had that getaway. Like, for, for, for us, you know, the country place was just the place where we can go and everyone was free to do whatever the hell we wanted, right? There was like barely any cars. Like they trusted us, man. We were like eight years old and we would walk down the road and go to the lake by ourselves. We didn't have parents. And they, they, didn't, they didn't mind. They trusted us. Can you imagine you now, your kid, Chris, like he's 10, uh, 10 11 years old. Would you even let him go to the pool by himself? Uh, yeah. Now. But it took a lot of work. It took yeah. it took a lot. It took a lot. It took a lot of trying and not like Back it then. took a lot of like walking in the street not saying anything and just see if you'll check the, the both yeah. sides of the street. Right. And it took like 15, 20 times, right? See, like, so, after, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. So for them, it was like, look, we're going to go there. That's like our safe place. You guys can do whatever the hell you want. Nobody's going to bother you. Uh, I'm going to do whatever I want. Your mom is going to do whatever she wants. And so you can't was, get in trouble for breaking the house. You can't do anything. Cause first of all, we're never in the house. Like there was nothing to uh, break. I'm saying if you house. stayed, if you stayed at the house and, and you didn't go, to you, the guys, you, you guys have seen the house like recently. But back when we were there, it was nothing. It was plywood for floor, and it was a curtain for a bathroom door, and there was like nothing. <laughs> you know, what I mean, there was like a, there was a plywood counter. It wasn't what the house is now. It was just there for us to get. We didn't have running water. We would get water next door from John. We'd bring it up in bins. You know. Uh, uh, but it was just the place we had to be, right? It was just, let's just go there. Everybody needed that break, right? And that's where uh, we could just let loose and do whatever the hell we wanted. And it was also a way for my dad to break away from that, I don't want to say boredom, but that mechanic. The day. monotony, man. The monotony of life and work. Yeah, yeah. And I think more than anything, he probably wanted to be there more than anyone else, right? And yeah. I, I got to see that side of my dad too, where he spent a lot of time with us, a lot of time. Like everything we did outdoors was with my dad, you know? Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't sports related. Like he would never come play baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, never, nothing. It was, I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. My dad, it was like, let's walk in the forest and let me teach you some stuff. Let's take yeah. uh, the boat and go fishing. We went hunting once and it was just not, you know, it was just not it. You know, it was like forget it. <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> you know, so hunting was not a big thing. But it was, and it was, it was almost standard. Like we would wake up really early, like at five thirty, six. We would go. We wanted to go fishing. My dad obviously was up. Like I don't, I don't think this guy ever slept. But you know, we were up early. And I remember that time that you came too. We were up like at six in the morning. Okay, let's go. Fi-. It was like we had a schedule. We go fishing in the morning until noon before the sun go. You know. Uh, yeah, but you, 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 your dad also loves the company, man. My dad, your dad is the guy that with with good stories, a good glass of wine, some good food, 
he could sit around for eight hours oh my God. and just yeah. and just chat all day. All One day. of those, right? He's yeah, chit chatting. Yeah. The guy he writes he writes poems. He writes books. He has he, he has he has the the contractor kind of like brute, but he also has the intellectual side. That's what's yeah. awesome about your dad. Yeah. He has he has both both sides. He reads a lot. My dad is uh, is uh, he was um, a curious. Uh, and he, he didn't go to school. My dad, you know, he did elementary school and then he did a technical school to become a, a, a boat mechanic, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I can't remember a time where my dad didn't have a book in his hands. Like, he, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he still reads. Uh, like, he's always, you know. Uh, he has the intellectual side. He has it. He does. So, that, Like, my dad, you know what I would do? I would read, for, I would read a page and my dad would get bored. <laughs> like, stop reading your book. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, how much my dad did like the Greek, the Greek newspapers. Oh yeah, yeah that's it. But that it ended up right? literature, not literature. Yeah, no literature, zero. Oh no, uh, my dad. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny a story. Uh, I remember what, and I don't even know how this conversation had come up. You know, like in case <laughs> the house catches on fire, right? He's like, listen, kids. If the house catches on fire, you grab the biggest cover you can get, you lie it on the floor, you throw all my books in it, and you run out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, those are the valuables, man. <laughs> Just get my the book. In the house. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he, he, he reads a lot, my dad. But, uh, yeah, that, that was something that for us was um, – and I got to tell you, and I mean, that kind of saved also the family, you know, for, for a long period of time. My dad was injured and he wasn't working, like, throughout all of high school. Um, end of yeah, that, that's when he would make those famous pizzas. Yeah, he would, uh, and you know, and that's the other image that I have of being a dad because our generation, you know, grew up with you know the the you know that dad figure that the man brings home the cash, the mom takes care of the family. Like that was kind of how we you know were brought into this whole thing. You know, like that the man mm-hmm. has a role, the woman has her role. Obviously, today it's not it's not the case. It's not it's very different but that's how the mentality was back then and i grew up with a dad you know at the end of elementary school and all throughout high school he was home he was home he couldn't work he was injured so i got to see a a man who and obviously you you see like it had affected his ego like fuck I, i can't i can't be here i have to be providing for my family blah 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 so but it wasn't the case. So like we went through like a good six years living with one salary, basically my mom's salary. And I got to see my dad pretty much waking up in the morning, driving my mom to work, coming back. He would cook, he would iron, he would clean the clothes. He would fucking clean the house. It was like what moms usually did. Right. So also an image that I have imprinted of what a man is supposed to be. Right. I mean, you have to take care of the house. And, and that's a good thing because, you know, uh, uh, there's this misconception, you know, especially now in these days where, you know, look, the man is the provider and the woman takes care of the house, which is obviously not true. Uh, and, I, and we got to see that, too, with my dad. And it's also that period of time where obviously things were stressful. And I can't even imagine. I don't even have the courage to, tell, to ask my parents, how was that period? Like knowing now how it is running yeah, a family. Yeah paying for a mortgage, all these things, you know, having a budget and making sure that everything is okay. I don't have, I never had that courage to, to go up to them and say, how the hell did you manage? How, how, how the hell did you pull through that period of time? Like, I know what daycare educators make. It's still bullshit now. It was probably even more bullshit back then. How the hell did we survive with one salary that my mom used to make? You understand? Um, and I'm sure that that house that they could have very easily sold. You know, I mean, look, you have a financial issue, boom. So, we, we, okay, we don't need the, the country. And yet they still kept it, you know. And, and that, I think, was like the lifeboat, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure, I, like, even though I don't have the courage to, to ask them how things were back then, I can almost imagine that it, it wasn't easy, right? And the fact that we had that place, I think it, it, it got everyone just to settle down and clear their minds and I, I'm convinced that that pretty much saved a situation. I don't know what kind of situation, but a situation for sure. And it was also a time that my dad became kind of much more, much more lenient, right? Like I mean, my dad was like a very uh, strict person. It was like very like, no, do this, do that. like very, very strict. And after that period of time where maybe because of the fact that he wasn't in that environment, in that working environment for all that time, he kind of calmed down, you know, he wrote his book, like you said, and he, he changed, like he became, he transitioned from dad to friend, 
You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. it was the time that we were going into high school. And that was, um, that's the time where we kind of uh, came, you know, close, uh, much, much closer, obviously, than before we were in elementary school. I mean, things are there like you're a child, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I think that had a lot to do with it. So I think, you know, the circumstances, I mean, I'm sure at that point in time, we're unfortunate for everything that was going on. But at the same time, I think, Maybe it was a good thing, you know. Like the guy kind of changed, and he he calmed down, and uh, he became this approachable human, <laughs> you know. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's uh, tough. Uh, like you said, it, it's it's weird talking about you know your dad, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's like you do, you don't you don't you don't talk about this stuff, or at least my you know dad, what? Ima- ima- so imagine that look. About we're different. Like we're, we, we kind of did it. Look, we kind of spoke about it, right? And it was, it was fine. But imagine now if we had to go to our dads and ask them to talk about us. <laughs> dude. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, dude. Like, the, guy, the, guy would be embarrassed, the guy would be embarrassed for a year. A year. We just we just wouldn't know how to handle it. Well, for some reason, I've been blushing for a year. For blushing for a year. No, but I, you know, I think now, like. At the age of that right now, I think my dad would kind of just open up and just talk, you know, and say, you know, how things were and uh, what he thinks your about dad, that. Your dad, uh, your dad wrote a book. He's very expressive. He is. So, yeah. What, what we have to do is we have to go get a damizana of wine. Yeah, go sit with him. Go, go up north and then p- pick his brain a bit, you know, just like, hey. How many, how, how many times did we go up north and we just wanted just us, the guys, right? And suddenly my dad would show up and, you know, kind of stay next door to John's parents. Not because he wanted to look over us, but just because he wanted to hang out. Yeah. yeah. He'd come and sing. <laughs> he just wanted yeah. to be around. <laughs> he'd, yeah. make, he'd make tipuro over to while we're hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Rip out the guitars, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's... Yeah, uh, good times, man. Those are fun times. Those are good. Yeah. Those are good. Cool. Yeah, my dad, my dad so, was yeah, really man. like that. Hey, what? what? Sorry? No, my dad wasn't like that at all. He yeah. was more like, uh, I'm a father, I stay here, you you guys stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, you're, you're, you're an idiot. Stay over there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have patience for that conversation yet, yeah. you're not 20. But what, what, what George said before, my dad kind of went through that little, like, laxing, like, relaxing transition where he chilled a bit after he retired. And um, even though he was a cook, like he would, like it would be rare that he cooked something, right? But when he retired, reluctantly, slowly, 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 he would pick it up once a week, twice a week, to the point where he got where he was actually cooking every day, right? So yeah. my mom would come back from work, and uh, the food would be ready. But that that took time. That that, that was a, a he was he got messed up a little bit. <laughs> you know, it, it, it messed him up. It wasn't. He wasn't sure how to handle it. Yeah, yeah. He was, he wasn't sure how to handle it. He wasn't sure if we could tell people that he's doing this. Oh, we, I don't know. We weren't allowed to tell our friends yet. You know, my mom yeah, couldn't right. couldn't share that he's cooking. It was it was, it was yes. tough. That's so yes, weird. Doctor, like, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, levels. Yeah, yeah, and, and then like maybe two, three years after that, it was like, oh, okay, man, I'll, pot, I'll pass them up. <laughs> you know, like, like I get reluctantly again. Let me, slowly, take, it, like, let me take it to the next level. Yeah, here. the next level. We gotta go to the next level. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, That's man, funny. Like, yeah, yeah. But uh, never what he never touched his laundry. Oh yeah, never. He he knew how to do it because obviously he was single and he was doing it for himself. Sure. But uh, take care of the whole family laundry never. Yeah. He repaired the machine when it broke. He knew. How, yeah, he knew how to repair the machine when it broke. But that's it. <laughs> that's it. So yeah, man. Hey, look, we got uh, what? We got an hour. Yeah, yeah. We uh, yeah we uh, we spoke about our dads for an hour. Wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, we well, won't well, tell them because they might have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> it, might, it might put them in the hospital. <laughs> uh, but no, it's good, man. It, like the, you see, what we, what we talk about, it proves that a, a father is a key component of the family, man. It's yeah. part of the structure. It's part of the foundation. Yeah. And uh, with the high rates of divorce and all that stuff, and uh, in the states like the Planned Parenthood and all that, and yeah, you should give, you should empower women, but you shouldn't really encourage uh, single parents. You know, it, it, it takes a unit to raise a kid. You got to get those both perspectives, and I think it's very, very important. And um, we're kind of missing it, but I don't want to end it on a, on a dark tone like that. Yeah. But well, honestly, yeah, look, I, a- I believe that it's important. 
Yeah. Look, there's obviously unfortunate circumstances, right? But um, I, I see what you're saying. I think everyone has a role to play. And, you know, this mm-hmm. is why I love what we're doing, guys, like this platform, because, and you know, r- remember when we had first started and I was telling you, like, there's so much stuff on women and rightfully so. I don't mind. I mean, the women should have, you know, the, the different platforms telling them about whatever motherhood and uh, whatever they, they talk about, but very little on men, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because by nature, we don't want to talk about our feelings or we don't want to talk about ourselves or we don't want, you know, I mean, maybe, who knows. But, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of men out there that would appreciate, you know, have, seeing that, you know, look, let me... But, but it is tough for a lot of men. There's, there's a joke by Bill Burr. I forget how he says it. I can't paraphrase it, but it's something around the lines of, like, people, men get heart attacks at a young age because they're suppressing the idea that a, a puppy is cute for years. <laughs> like, like they can't admit that, that a puppy is cute. So all that, like, uh, like suppressing that feeling. <laughs> it's a heart attack. You know? I just find that clever, man. That's really awesome. But um, I ruined the joke. It's something along those lines, but you know, he's right, man. He's yeah. right. Like hundred percent. Yeah. 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 You know, or like, uh, you remember Christa, right? Plessa? Yeah. 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 You're yeah on- that was my dad's best friend. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and he passed away like this year. And, many times he'd come over and I would hear them talk. They would talk about everything but their feelings. <laughs> there, right? They, there they, would, feelings. There's they no- would talk about everything but their feelings. Yeah. Never. Never. Yeah. Do, you, do, you think, do you think at some point? You know, like, like, uh, like here's, here's something I've never heard from my dad. I was like, I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. And it didn't, ne- never, never. Things like really? that. Never. never. Are you kidding information me? was blunt. It was black and white. It was information. <laughs> it was, it was, no it was technical. It was technical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, That's like, so oh, kita, like, kita, 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 <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't stuff. Like, it wasn't stuff like that. Man. Anyway, just do whatever. Man. You, you guys know what I'm saying, and it's still hard for some men today, man. Yeah. We're getting better at it, but uh, you cannot deny that it is a problem with some men. Yeah. Men and their oh, feelings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something. My dad should say is that a father. He told me this. Has a father has to suffer in silence because you you have to be the strongest component. So you have to suffer in silence because if they if they see you suffering, they feel weak. It's no good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's the old leadership kind of mantra where it's yeah. like, don't show vulnerability. You can't be vulnerable. It's just no, but it's an army thing. Like it, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. If, you're, if you're saying a lot, ooh, ah, eh, the next guy's gonna start too. The whole thing, <laughs> you know, the whole thing the fuck up. collapses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! You're ruining everybody's mood. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Stretch your mouth and keep plowing. Go. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and, the, and these are concepts that are slowly, slowly kind of uh, dying out. Yeah, but is yeah. it really a bad thing, though? I mean, is it really a bad thing it, that... It oh, depends. Look, it this depends. is a whole other conversation. Poverty, this and that. Guys, this is a whole other conversation that we yeah. can treat another, but uh, seeing the results today, uh, I think so. <laughs> I think uh, we're, we're, we're missing things. Yeah. And uh, on that note, we're going <laughs> to do that for another conversation. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, happy Happy Father's Day to you guys, and Happy Father's Day to everyone listening, to everyone following. Thanks again for everything, and uh, thanks to all congratulations the out to there. the winner. And yeah, again, congratulations to the winner. Enjoy that drink. Cheers on us, and uh, we will see you all in the next episode. Ciao, boys. Sounds good, boys. Ciao. Adios.